Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Kenshiki 2021. It's a great pleasure to have you here today with us, and I really appreciate you taking the time and the effort to get here in these challenging times. And it's also very great to see so many familiar faces. The other thing that I would like to highlight is with regard to the embargo. So everything that we will share with you today through discussions, through plenary, through deep dives and so forth, is under embargo until Thursday of this week, Thursday the 2nd of December at 3 o'clock Central European time. Your cooperation and your understanding of this would be very much appreciated. Thank you. With that, let's get underway, and I'd like to welcome on stage President and CEO of Toyota Motor Europe, Mr. Matt Harrison. Matt. Thank you, Robert. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very great pleasure for me to welcome you all to our third Kenshiki Forum. Thank you for the feedback that you've provided on our previous events. We are transforming our business and ourselves at speed and would like to continue to update you on a regular basis as the automotive sector faces a period of profound change. Our first two Kenshiki events were, of course, led by my predecessor as president and CEO, Dr. Johan van Zeil. Many of you previously met Johan and will have been deeply saddened, as I was, to learn of his passing in the summer, several months after retiring and returning to his beloved home, South Africa. He was an inspirational leader and a wonderful human being, and I consider it a great honor to follow him in leading TME and to take up his mandate at this event. When I was appointed as president and CEO of Toyota in Europe last April, after Johan retired, President Toyota gave me some important personal advice. He told me that to maintain our competitiveness in this once-in-a-century period of transformation, we needed to become more innovative and agile, and to focus on the important role that Europe would play in leading our global carbon neutrality ambition. Responding to this advice, one of my first actions in my new role was to identify areas where I felt we needed to significantly increase our transformation speed, and I prioritized eight of them. One, to develop a comprehensive 2030 mobility for all strategy and accelerate our transformation from an automotive company to a mobility company, ensuring that no one is left behind. Two, to lead our beyond zero commitment and advance our carbon neutral journey, benefiting from Europe's readiness to support sustainable transport. Three, to become a global benchmark for Toyota in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusivity, reflecting the diversity and expectations of European society. 
Four, to accelerate our local electrification plan. Five, to achieve a breakthrough in our manufacturing cost competitiveness as we prepare our manufacturing footprint for that electrified future. Six, to continue developing our long-term alliance strategies in Europe as the challenges we are facing require collaboration at an unprecedented level. Seven, to maintain our hydrogen leadership, continuing our active role in promoting and helping to build a hydrogen society. This has an important part to play in our journey to carbon neutrality. And finally, eight, to ensure that Toyota becomes a top digital company in Europe. As we have limited time today, we plan to focus on three of these priorities. Our leadership and active role in building a hydrogen society, the acceleration of our electrification plan, and our commitment to achieving carbon neutrality. Now, on this last point, let me say a few words about Toda's position regarding the 2040 commitment that was proposed during COP26. Ever since Toyota was established as a car company, our focus has been on providing affordable and efficient transport solutions for all. And that philosophy has led to Toyota successfully manufacturing and selling vehicles across the world. Looking at the global challenge, however, we know that there are many regions and countries where the infrastructures and access to clean energy solutions will take longer than 2040 to put in place. This is why we believe it's important to retain the option of providing a range of efficient powertrain solutions to all customers as they progress on their individual journeys to carbon neutrality. But of course, at the same time, we're working hard to ensure that we'll be able to provide our customers with an increasing number of practical and affordable zero emission vehicles. We've previously explained that by 2025, we expect our zero emission vehicle mix here in Europe to be at least 10% of our sales volume, with hybrid and plug-in hybrid sales accounting for 80%. By 2030, taking into account the EU's Fit for 55 CO2 reduction plan, we anticipate our zero emission vehicle mix will have increased to at least 50%. To be frank with you, nobody really knows exactly what the speed of change to zero emission vehicles will be. And this 50% figure is largely based on regulatory requirements and our evaluation of the wide range of zero emission vehicles that we expect to be available. However, if infrastructure development allows and consumer demand is there, we will be ready to flex to a higher mix. Moving beyond 2030, we expect to see further zero emission vehicle demand acceleration, and Toyota will be ready to achieve 100% CO2 reduction in all new vehicles by 2035 in Western Europe, assuming that sufficient electric charging and hydrogen refueling infrastructures are in place by then, together with the renewable energy capacity increases that will be required. Let me highlight again that this is a Western European projection. Naturally, in some markets like Norway, for instance, where infrastructures are already well developed or being installed, we expect to be selling 100% zero emission vehicles much earlier than 2035. But in other markets where charging infrastructure and hydrogen networks will take a bit more time to be installed, we'll continue to help customers minimize carbon emissions by offering a full range of electrification technologies across our lineup. In a few moments, you'll hear from Gerald Kilman, Vice President of R&D here at Toda Motor Europe, how we're continuing to develop a variety of technologies to benefit all customers. And after Gerald, you'll hear from Gil Pratt, 
chief scientist for Toyota, about how all these technologies will work in harmony to minimize carbon emissions on our journey towards full carbon neutrality. But before that, let me share with you our expectations of where we will finish at the end of 2021. We expect our full-year sales, Toyota and Lexus combined, to reach 1,070,000 vehicles, an increase of 80,000 sales compared to 2020. We anticipate this to result in a market share of 6.3% for the combined passenger car and light commercial vehicle markets, which will be a new record for us. And for the first time, Toyota will be the number two passenger car brand in Europe, with Yaris, Corolla and Igo all achieving top three positions in their segments. Looking back, just a couple of years ago, Toyota was doing well, but didn't regularly feature in the top five in Europe. So what's changed? Well, most importantly, our product power has increased significantly. The majority of our vehicles are now underpinned by TNGA platforms, meaning that we're offering vehicles that not only look great, but also deliver excellent driving performance. And as confirmed by our ever-increasing electrified sales mix, which will reach 70% in Western Europe this year, our hybrid powertrains continue to attract new customers to both brands, especially those that are looking for practical and accessible ways to reduce their carbon footprint. In addition to our product power, I'm also very pleased with the way that the Toyota brand image has continued to strengthen and the trust and confidence that consumers have shown in us. This indicates that the brand platforms that we put in place, Toyota Gazoo Racing Strategy, our mobility partnership with the Olympics and Paralympics, and our Beyond Zero Communications are bringing our values to life. And lastly, I give credit to the team. I'm extremely proud of the way that we have navigated this challenging year as one Toyota team, demonstrating our manufacturing and supply chain flexibility and agility, but also our retail and sales capability to ensure a great experience for our customers. Toyota has not been immune to the impact of chip shortages, although I believe our approach to supply chain risk management has allowed us to weather the storm better than most. But please don't be misled into thinking that our increasing success is down to our ability to supply vehicles when others could not. Today, our order bank is at a record level, and our forward order cover extends beyond four months. If I look at the annualized pace of our customer contract intake, we're running at a demand level of around 1.3 million sales. Perhaps then, it won't surprise you when I confirm that in 2022, we expect to take another big step forward for sales in Europe. Our strong demand momentum gives us confidence that we will increase sales to 1.3 million vehicles next year, and we expect that to result in a market share of at least 6.5%. That's an increase of 230,000 sales in one year, and by far the largest advance in our history. This will be achieved through the strong demand we have for our existing models and significant new model introductions as our vehicle and powertrain portfolio continues to grow. Launched a few months ago, the new Yaris Cross will enjoy its first full year of sales in 2022, contributing significant incremental volume. With great design, low CO2 emissions from its fourth-generation hybrid powertrain, and a segment-unique all-wheel-drive system, this car has been extremely well-received by our customers. And as with Yaris Hatchback, it's proving quite a challenge for us to keep supply in line with demand. 
After a successful world premiere just a few weeks ago, we'll also introduce the new IGO Cross early next year. This new model will build on the strong equity already established by IGO and will provide an exciting new entry point to the Toyota brand. Accessibility has always been at the core of the IGO offer, and of course, the new IGO Cross will retain this with a monthly payment that's similar to the current model. At the same time, it significantly increases IGO's emotional value with a design that was created and developed here in Europe. It will also bring customers the latest in safety and connected technologies, plus, of course, Toyota's legendary quality, durability and reliability. IGO Cross will be a very strong addition to our model lineup in 2022. Together with the European Car of the Year, Yaris, and the newly launched Yaris Cross, these three models will deliver half a million sales combined. All built on the GAB platform, these vehicles will generate a large part of our growth in the short term and transform our appeal and competitiveness in the small car segments in the coming years. Now, the second new model I want to talk about today is the BZ4X, our latest milestone on our journey to zero emissions and beyond. It's the first model in a global series of at least seven BZ vehicles. And without going into detail today, let me confirm that the rollout of BZ products will be rapid, and you will not have to wait long before we preview smaller models that are specifically designed for Europe. BZ stands for Beyond Zero, and it signifies Toda's ambition to not only focus on achieving zero emissions, but also to look beyond in terms of other positive impacts on society, such as safety, well-being, diversity, and happiness. You saw the concept version of BZ4X earlier this year in Shanghai, but today I'd like to introduce you to the production model. We're delighted that on its journey from concept to production, the BZ4X has lost none of its dynamic lines and attractive surfaces. Full battery electric is a key element of our holistic approach to carbon neutrality, and the BZ4X comes the fifth battery electric vehicle in Toyota's European lineup. It is, however, the first to be based on our all-new eTNGA architecture. There's huge anticipation for the arrival of this car, and having driven it, I can assure you that our customers will be more than delighted with the way it performs. As you know, RAV4 is a relatively capable off-road performer, but I would say that the BZ4X outperforms it and is even heading towards Land Cruiser territory. It's that good. If you've ever thought that a pure electric car could never be a capable off-road SUV, 
driving the BZ4X will make you think again. Perhaps that's no surprise from a vehicle which embodies all of the SUV heritage and know-how of Toyota and Subaru combined. Of course, not all our customers will use this level of off-road capability, but they like to know it's there if it's ever needed. We'll tell you more about this in today's deep dive session and explain a number of the other advanced new technologies we're introducing with the BZ4X. As customers contemplate committing to a completely new propulsion technology, it's important that we provide them with full reassurance that they are making the right decision. Consumer concerns around range and battery durability of BVs are well documented and understood. This is a key area where I believe our extensive heritage and experience gives us a significant advantage. No one in our industry has more experience or expertise in electrification than Toyota. And no one in our industry enjoys the same level of customer trust and loyalty to electrified products as we do. For over 25 years, we've led the way in electrification and we've continued to develop and refine our technologies, enhancing them with what we've learned from literally billions of kilometers of real-life driving. We've drawn on all of this experience to ensure the BZ4X is the most efficient and durable product available. In fact, such is our confidence in the BZ4X that I'm able to announce to you today that we will back it with a warranty that's extendable up to one million kilometers. The technologies and battery quality of the BZ4X are world leading, but we're not resting on our laurels. We're working hard to maintain our leadership in sustainable motoring, not just in electrified powertrains, but across a whole portfolio of technologies that will enable us to reach our goal of carbon neutrality, whilst also continuing to bring relevant and accessible products within reach of the widest possible audience. To tell you more about these efforts, please welcome Gerald Kilman. Thank you, Matt. BZ4X represents an important milestone in our development. It is the first product on our ETNGA, as Matt said. And in the coming months and years, we will release a number of others. Some of them will be developed in partnerships with Subaru, Suzuki, and Daihatsu. ETNGA has been designed with clever inbuilt flexibility to enable us and our partners to create a range of vehicles, each of which will be optimized to suit their customer needs. This includes a range of motor sizes and drive types, and includes both two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, as we just saw with the BZ4X. As for batteries, the ETNGA platform allows for a range of not only battery size, but also in the future of different battery types. The battery, of course, is a critical element in electrified vehicles, and it is a key consideration point for customers. And they're not only thinking about range. At Toyota, we focus on several key areas for batteries. Quality, durability, reliability, performance, safety, and of course, cost. This holistic approach is based on our long experience of vehicles that use batteries to move. And we have learned a great deal from having produced and sold around 20 million electrified vehicles around the world, including those operating 
in the really harshest environments. Take safety, for example. We have implemented control systems that protect batteries against internal hotspots or localized temperature increases in the battery that may come from spirited driving or heavier loads. And this gives customers peace of mind, the reassurance that our batteries are safe. This type of temperature control, along with controls during charging and discharging, contributes strongly not only to safety, but also to our commitment to world-leading battery durability and reliability. And of course, we continue to advance battery technology. For instance, we recently started the production of the world's first bipolar nickel metal hydride battery. This is smaller and lighter than a regular nickel metal hydride battery. It uses less precious materials, which means less mining and lower environmental impact. And of course, lower cost. Yet, it delivers an output density which is double of that of a regular nickel metal hydride battery. And now, we're applying the same kind of breakthrough thinking to our lithium-ion batteries. And our experience gives us the confidence that we can reduce the cost of lithium-ion battery electric vehicle batteries by 30% or even more in the short term. And at the same time, we expect to be able to reduce energy consumption in the vehicle also by 30%, and thereby allowing us to make the battery 30% smaller for actually the same range. And now putting these two elements together, we expect to be able to reduce battery cost per vehicle by 50% in the second half of the 2020s. We expect that this approach will bring significant benefits in terms of packaging, vehicle weight, and perhaps most importantly, battery electric vehicle affordability. In addition, around the same time, we expect to commercialize solid-state batteries with the aims of delivering higher output, longer range, and shorter charging times. Last year, we built a vehicle equipped with solid-state batteries, and we are continuing to test and gather data, focusing especially on the development of durability. We believe solid-state batteries have great potential for battery electric vehicles. But actually, we may first install them in hybrid electric vehicles. Some of you might be surprised to hear that. But as we will explain later, hybrid will continue to play a very important role in reducing carbon emissions in many countries in Europe and around the world, still for many years to come. And therefore, we are developing, we are continuing its development. And this, of course, includes our forthcoming fifth generation hybrid system, which focuses on further improving efficiency, drivability, and reducing overall size and weight by using more compact components. This new hybrid system will soon make its debut in the Corolla Cross for Europe. Let's meet it now.
Wow, what a fantastic looking car. As I'm sure you're aware, in the C segment, SUVs have now become dominant in terms of sales volume. At number three in the segment, the CHR continues to be a strong performer, with sales increasing year on year. However, we do see the opportunity to expand our segment offer to meet the needs of customers that require more space and practicality. So, what better than combining the equity of the world's best-selling nameplate, Corolla, with our newly established Cross family to create the Corolla Cross and to bring to market our latest hybrid technology to further support the segment's rapid shift to electrified powertrains. Corolla Cross is a practical, smart and sophisticated car that offers the very latest in hybrid technology, connectivity and safety system, with an SUV body type that's attractive and emotional, and yet, at the same time, accessible. You will learn more about Corolla Cross and our fifth-generation hybrid technology later in our deep dive session. And let me close by restating our continued commitment to our multi-tech approach and intention to push forward in electrification across many different fronts to give every customer the opportunity to reduce their carbon footprint without delay. To tell you more, let me now hand over to Gil, who will present via video. Hello, everyone. I'm Gil Pratt, Chief Scientist for Toyota Motor Corporation and CEO of the Toyota Research Institute. As you have just heard, Toyota is investing tremendous resources in batteries. Now, I'd like to discuss why Toyota plans to use those batteries, both in millions of battery electric vehicles like the recently revealed BZ4X, and also in a diverse range of other electrified vehicle drivetrains. I'd like to begin by considering an analogous question from biology. Why does nature have so much biodiversity? In fact, there are millions of different species of plants and animals on Earth. So why hasn't evolution selected just a few to survive? If you ask biologists, they'll give you three reasons. First, climates and conditions vary geographically. So we should expect to find different species in different places. Arctic foxes aren't well suited to deserts and desert foxes aren't well suited to the Arctic. Diverse circumstances call for diverse solutions. And what is best for one is not best for all. Second, plants and animals don't exist in a vacuum. They are connected in a complex network of interdependence, and that interdependence encourages diversity. Third, biodiversity makes life robust, despite an uncertain future. For example, 66 million years ago, a meteor wiped out 75% of the species on Earth, including the non-avian dinosaurs. But the large diversity of life ensured its continuation, including some tiny primates that had the opportunity to evolve into us, human beings. Evolution figured out that the solution to uncertainty is diversity. So when you hear other people, be it David Attenborough or Jane Goodall, talking about the importance of biodiversity, it's not just because they want us to enjoy having diverse animals and plants to look at, it's because they deeply understand that biodiversity is strongly linked to every species future success, including our own. So now let's consider Toyota's philosophy of diverse drivetrains. Toyota believes strongly in BEVs and their ability to reduce carbon emissions. The recently unveiled BZ4X is the latest BEV model introduced to the European market, and we will soon be making millions of BEVs per year globally. In addition to the carbon reduction benefit of all of those BEVs, Toyota also believes that adding other diverse drivetrains to the mix 
can reduce net carbon emissions still further. Now, why is that? Well, as with biodiversity, there are several reasons. First, we know that circumstances vary with geography. And as in nature, diverse circumstances call for diverse solutions. The EU, for example, gets over a quarter of its energy from nuclear and renewables. By contrast, nearly 90% of Japan's energy comes from fossil fuels. Furthermore, some countries have wonderful charging infrastructure, whereas others have almost none. Our analysis, which is available as open source at carghg.org, shows that when full life cycle emissions are considered under real driving conditions, different types of electrified vehicles have remarkably similar carbon emissions. So given the diversity of circumstances in different geographies, this means that the way to reduce the most net carbon emissions around the world is to offer a diverse portfolio of drivetrains. BEVs are wonderful, but if there are only BEVs, then for some time to come, some parts of the world won't reduce as much carbon. As an analogy, if there were only desert foxes, there would be no foxes in the Arctic at all. The second reason Toyota believes in diverse drivetrains is human diversity. Many people around the world want to contribute to lowering carbon emissions. By offering diverse solutions, we can enable more people to do so. As in biology, what is best for one is not best for all. People buy different types of cars for a reason, and this is true for the ability to reduce carbon emissions as well. Some people live in suburbs where overnight charging is easy. Other people live in cities where that is more of a challenge. Some people are wealthy. Most people are not. So the way to enable the most number of people to contribute what they can to carbon neutrality is to offer a diverse palette of options so that everyone can find something that works for them. The third reason Toyota believes in diverse drivetrains is to maximize what is called carbon return on investment, or CROI. The production of many environmentally friendly products, including batteries and solar cells, emits some carbon into the atmosphere. The good news is that such products have the ability to reduce more carbon emissions after they are produced than was emitted during their production. But that ability is not a guarantee. If we produce a battery and never use it, its CROI will be zero. Whereas if we use it fully, it will have high CROI. Now here's why this matters. In the US, the average round trip commute is around 50 kilometers. If a 500 kilometer BEV is recharged every night and only used for average commutes, 90% of its battery cells will have a CROI of zero. Those unused battery cells could prevent far more carbon from entering the atmosphere by being put to use in other electrified vehicles. For example, we can produce eight 60 kilometer PHEVs using the same number of battery cells as a single 500 kilometer BEV and in the 50 kilometer commuting only scenario, we can save eight times the carbon emissions. Now, of course, this is an extreme example. Vehicles are actually used in widely diverse ways, but as long as battery technology is improving and supply is limited, both of which will be true for some time, the best way to maximize net carbon reduction is to put today's battery cells into a diversity of drivetrains so as to maximize CROI. Now, putting these three lessons together, I hope you can see that while Toyota is committed to making millions of battery electric vehicles available, the way to reduce the most net carbon emissions globally is to use every tool in our toolbox, including hybrid electric, plug-in hybrid electric, battery electric, and fuel cell electric vehicles, with the proportions of each optimized to make best use of the infrastructure constraints and customer circumstances of every region and also the limited supply and improving performance of batteries. Now, let me turn to an experiment in even more diversity. As I mentioned, the third lesson from nature is that the solution to uncertainty is diversity. The science of climate change is very certain, but the future of technology to mitigate climate change is not. Many people try to predict what technology will work best in the future and engage in fierce debates as to what will be. 
Now, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but most of these predictions are likely to be wrong. The smartphone that you carry in your pocket, as an example, is a device that 20 years ago hardly anyone would have predicted. And even in slower moving fields like energy, there have been extraordinary surprises, like energy independence for the United States and the significant cost declines of photovoltaics and lithium ion batteries. The solution to uncertainty is not prediction, it's to engage, as nature does, in a continual diverse range of experiments, and experimentation is a fundamental tool in the Toyota philosophy of continuous improvement, what we call Kaizen. One of our latest such experiments is hydrogen engines. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. This must be an exercise of Toyota trying to find a new role for old internal combustion technology, like horse carriage makers must have done when cars were displacing horses. Well, I can assure you that we fully understand how vehicle technology is changing. I also know that others of you are thinking that because hydrogen has twice the power losses of lithium batteries, and ICEs are also less efficient than fuel cells, that a hydrogen engine must certainly make no sense. Well, I can assure you that we understand this trade off as well. Here's where the connection between interdependence and diversity in nature has an analog, and it explains Toyota's continued interest in hydrogen and hydrogen engines. We know that nearly 100 million metric tons of hydrogen are produced every year globally to make ammonia and fertilizers for food production. To put that number in perspective, that's enough hydrogen to fill up 20 billion Toyota Mirais, with each fill up good for 675 kilometers. We know that hydrogen's production is presently gray and must become carbon neutral. And we know that the world's need for hydrogen, even at present levels, will be the necessity that drives the invention of carbon neutral ways to produce hydrogen including the elimination of fugitive methane emissions. In addition, we know that batteries have significant drawbacks at the very large scales necessary to level out variations in renewable power supply and demand over seasons and years. So as electrical grids become more renewable, longer term large energy storage solutions like hydrogen will be necessary. Hydrogen's appeal comes from the fact that to expand the amount of storage with hydrogen, you only need to expand the tank without needing to expand the fuel cell or the engine, while with batteries, you must add more whole batteries. This means a lot of carbon neutral hydrogen is likely to be produced in the future. And like interdependent species in nature, the availability of zero greenhouse gas hydrogen will enable other uses of hydrogen, including mobility. Hydrogen has complementary advantages to lithium ion batteries two of which are much higher energy per weight and much faster recharging. This means that while batteries are the best answer in many contexts, hydrogen may be more suited to larger vehicles like trucks, trains, and ships, and also aircraft and rockets that are particularly mass sensitive. Even with the lower efficiency of an engine compared to a fuel cell, there may be applications for hydrogen combustion engines where low mass, low cost, Fast refueling and high robustness are very important. Developing large hydrogen combustion engines for large vehicles takes a long time, however. So we can start to learn a lot by first trying out smaller engines in smaller vehicles. It is with this spirit of experimentation, inspiration, and excitement that I introduce to you the Lexus Hydrogen Recreational Off-Road Vehicle Concept. Thank you very much. Over to you, Matt. Thank you, Gil. Lexus is bold when it comes to design and technologies, and this concept vehicle 
takes things to a whole new level. It's one of the most surprising creations ever imagined by our premium brand. This vehicle could allow our customers to explore the most remote places in style and in a sustainable way. It's called the ROV concept, with ROV standing for recreational off-road vehicle. Of course, it's not meant for production, at least not yet. But it shows Lexus's intention to develop innovative vehicles that support a wide range of lifestyle experiences and are fun to drive. The Lexus ROV concept is designed to deliver an exciting experience thanks to its lightweight but robust construction, an advanced suspension system, and its high power to weight ratio. Its hydrogen combustion engine is also extremely clean with near zero emissions. In that sense, the ROV concept is perfectly in line with Lexus's powertrain philosophy to deliver high value products in relevant segments of the premium market. We've also demonstrated this with our new NX plug-in hybrid, which is redefining the segment with its class-leading EV range and unparalleled efficiency. We're very pleased that you have confirmed this too during the recent Dynamic Press launch. Following on from that successful first generation, this new model will play an even more important role for Lexus in Europe, and we fully expect it to spearhead our growth ambitions in the short term. And the next step for Lexus in terms of powertrain expansion is almost upon us. In the first half of next year, we'll launch our first premium battery electric vehicle on a dedicated platform, the stunning all-new Lexus RZ. True to Lexus's innovative spirit, the RZ will feature groundbreaking technologies that will deliver a unique driving experience. These include a direct 4E axle, steer-by-wire, and a platform architecture specifically developed to deliver a premium and engaging experience. You'll hear more about it in the Lexus Deep Dive session later on. Lexus has already come a long way in a relatively short period of time. But as you can see with these exciting new models, we're strongly committed to further develop the Lexus brand and push forward in the premium market. To take the next step, we're building a brand new global headquarters for Lexus in Shimoyama, Japan. This new campus features carefully designed test tracks that reproduce the most diverse and demanding driving environments including some parts of the Nürburgring. At Shimoyama, Lexus engineers, designers, and planners will be co-located to stimulate creative solutions and the use of groundbreaking techniques to speed up the development of new models. This will lead to a whole new generation of Lexus vehicles that will bring our bold design philosophy, driving signature, and electrified strategy to the next level. The result will be a strong and sustained flow of product launches, including no less than 20 new or renewed models by 2025, supporting significant growth for Lexus globally. Our growth in Europe will also accelerate in the years to come. By 2025, we expect to almost double our volume to 130,000 sales and increase our premium market share to 3%. Now, another brand in our portfolio that continues to grow strongly is Toyota Gazoo Racing. After the launch of the exciting GR Supra in 2019 and the stunning GR Yaris last year, we're now in the launch phase of the latest addition to the GR family, the GR86.
As with the GR models, Akio Toda has been closely involved in the development, especially when it comes to ensuring this new AD6 performs as a true GR Halo model. A number of you had the opportunity to drive the car near Barcelona a few weeks ago. And to say that your feedback was very encouraging is quite an understatement. Outstanding and the perfect sports car are two of my favorite headlines. And I'm sure President Toda will be equally delighted to read them. We're already receiving a growing number of inquiries from potential customers, including those who believe GR86 could be the last of its kind. And at least for Europe, they may be right. In fact, potential customers will need to act relatively quickly to secure a GR86 of their own, as we plan to offer it for only two years. Our order books are already open, and deliveries in Europe will start in the first half of next year. Turning to motorsport, with our Gazoo Racing brand, we are pursuing a varied powertrain strategy towards carbon neutrality. And I'm sure you'll forgive me for quickly mentioning our recent triumphs as we take enormous pride in them. For the next few months, we'll celebrate the distinction of winning the double-double, both constructors and drivers' championships in both WEC and WRC. This is an unprecedented achievement, which speaks volumes about the exciting capabilities of our cars, their quality and durability, and the winning spirit of our company, championed from the very top by Akio Toyota. We owe much of our success to the prowess of the previous Yaris in its final season in WRC, and to the new GR010 hypercar, which in its debut season won Le Mans and the overall World Endurance Championship. Up next is the 2022 Dakar Rally. We will complete strongly with a new Hilux T1 Plus driven by Nasser Alatia and co-piloted by Mathieu Bommel. This inspires us, fingers crossed, to dream of a possible triple crown of simultaneously holding championships in WRC, WEC, and Dakar. 2022 will also see the debut of the new WRC Yaris with hybrid power, meaning that both our WEC GR010 hypercar and our WRC Yaris will have hybrid powertrains. Like the rest of motoring, motorsport is steadily moving in a sustainable direction, and Toyota is already playing a leading role. The FAA is increasingly looking at using sustainable e-fuels, perhaps even at the very highest level. In fact, in 2022, both the WRC Yaris and WEC GR010 will run with fuel created from 100% renewable sources. And as you've seen from Japan, we're already conducting our own experiments with hydrogen combustion in motorsports. What's great about this approach is that not only does it deliver almost zero tailpipe emissions without electrification, but it does so whilst retaining the things which fans love most about race cars, the speed and the noise. If you want to know how wonderful a hydrogen-powered, high-performance car can sound, maybe you should meet the experimental GR Yaris Hydrogen. Here it is.
Music to the ears, especially to those of a petrol head. It's just a concept, of course, but with the FAA mapping out a future that delivers excitement in a clean and sustainable way, it's no surprise to us at Toyota that hydrogen is at the top of their agenda. And who knows? Perhaps a road car with this technology could be a possibility, especially as we now see the hydrogen infrastructure in Europe starting to expand. The uplifting message of the GR Yaris Hydrogen is that even in a zero emissions future, we could still enjoy motoring thrills similar to those we enjoy today. And it needn't be a distant future. By using our existing internal combustion engine know-how and manufacturing investment, we could get there efficiently and quickly. So whatever the future holds, we're convinced that the journey to carbon neutrality will not only be electric, it will be eclectic. That's to say it will embrace multiple technologies and fuels which all lead to the same destination. Gil talked about this earlier. And to support the realization of this multi-technology approach in Europe, we've developed a new platform architecture that blends the key elements of ETNGA with platforms like GAC. Internally, we refer to this as our E3 architecture. This exciting new platform will enable us to deliver great design, great drivability and great packaging, especially for the electrification elements to an even wider portfolio of vehicles. In short, our new multi-tech platform will deliver three E's, emotion, engagement, and energy. And it will give us the possibility to flexibly adjust the powertrain mix of our core products, for instance, hybrid or plug-in hybrid or electric, according to customer demand and market infrastructure. We'll tell you more about this architecture in due course, but I can confirm to you today that it will become the center of gravity for our European production sites through 2030 and beyond. These plants are already operating with 100% renewable electricity, and we're committing to achieving carbon neutrality in all of our European manufacturing locations by 2030, beating our global ambition by five years. These are not straightforward targets to achieve, especially when you consider that we must reduce our manufacturing cost footprint in Europe at the same time. But the plans to achieve it are in place, and I'm confident that we will get there. I'm also certain that we'll be able to take big steps towards another carbon neutrality commitment regarding circular use and reuse of plastics. By working closely with our suppliers, our buying transforming our internal processes, we plan to more than triple the use of recycled plastics in our cars by 2030. This means at least 20,000 tons of plastic per year that will go into our cars and not into landfill. Part of this substantial increase will come through our plan to rapidly increase the use of 100% recycled PET seat fabric in our vehicles over the next five years. In addition, we'll be switching to animal-free interiors in the same time frame. These targets highlight how we're working in a holistic way to reduce carbon in every area of our business to get to carbon neutrality and sustainability as soon as possible. As part of that consideration, we must, of course, include the in-use carbon emissions of the vehicles we sell every year. Today, those form a large part of Toyota's carbon footprint in Europe. Earlier, I explained the zero emission powertrain mixes we anticipate for 2025 and 2030 before reaching 100% CO2 reduction by 2035, if infrastructure allow. And whilst battery electric and fuel cell electric vehicles will undoubtedly form the bulk of our zero emission vehicles in the coming 10 to 15 years, we're continuing to work on alternative technologies 
such as hydrogen combustion, perhaps for wider use than mainstream automotive, that could deliver near zero emissions without any electrification at all. Toyota is in a once in a century transformational period where, in addition to further developing our existing business operations, we're also rising to the challenge of transforming into a mobility company. There's no doubt that an unprecedented decade of change lies ahead of us. But there is no fear and no concern about these challenges. We see a future that is full of opportunity. We have strong demand momentum today and are confident that we can transform whilst continuing our growth path tomorrow. We're excited about change and we're ready for it. And as ever, we're putting our customers first. Their confidence in our products our services and our future plans is what gives us the strength and determination to succeed. All customers are on a journey to carbon neutrality, but depending on their needs and their local environments, they may not yet know exactly how soon they can get there. But one thing is for sure, Toyota will continue to be their trusted partner on their individual journeys. Today, tomorrow, and beyond. Thank you very much.